to do f of 2. But what about f of 2 plus c? How would I do f of 2 plus c? I take 2 plus c and I plug it in. There. Could I also have like g of x equals 3x minus 1? And do like f of g of 2. How would I do f of g of 2? First, what would I do? Plug 2 into g. Plug 2 into g. All right, so f of g of 2, I could do up on the side. 6 minus 1 is 5. So then f of 5, 5 squared is 25 plus 3 is 28. Right, do we kind of remember that from For summer sure. summer? And so that's what this notation is when we're getting at it. Like f of g of x, it's something like that. Right, so when it says if h of x is, if f of x is g of h of x, right, that's like something, one function inside of another. And sometimes it's really complicated, like sometimes it might literally look like, in this case, f of g of x would be taking g of x, 3x minus 1, and plugging it in. So that's 3x minus 1 squared plus 3. And that's all we're going to see. We're not going to see anything else. We're just going to see 3x squared minus 1 plus 3. But you have to realize when you see 3x squared minus 1 plus 3, that is a composition, meaning it's one function inside of another function. What function is the inside? The inside is 3x minus 1. Don't worry about f and g. The inside is 3x minus 1. And the outside is doing what? Squaring. And then also plus 3. But like especially even just this part, right? The inside is 3x minus 1. And the outside is squared. You cannot simply just take the derivative of 3x is 3 and square. It doesn't work that way. You're going to have to do something more complicated, right? And that's because how would we normally do this? We would FOIL it out. Okay, so we're just basically, what we're going to learn is a shortcut that also works for things with sine, cosine, tangent that aren't following normals. But I want to be clear on that. Like when I see g of h of x, it could just be something as simple as, like look at the top, 2x plus 3 cubed, right? So if I had this, in this case, that 2x plus 3 part is my inside, it's my h of x. And then just the squared part, or the cubed part, that part is my g of x. Okay. So uh, this notation is really, really nasty. So I have my notation that I like. You would call this Ewart's, the Ewart notation. Ewart method. Ewart method. <laughs> Ewart's many laws. So f of x equals, I just call it g of box. Then f prime of x equals g of box, oops, g of box, g prime of box, there we go, times the derivative of the box. And sometimes if I'm frustrated, I'll even call it, wow, well, I said box, didn't I? I wrote an x. Okay. Change your x into a box. If you have a pencil, you can erase. Okay. So, I zoom that in. So if f of x equals g of box, then f prime of x equals g prime of box times the derivative of the box. And sometimes when I'm frustrated or I'm just feeling like it, I'll change the box to just in my head say g of some shit, then f prime is g prime of that shit times the derivative of the shit. Um, <laughs> So, in this case, right, the box or the shit is always the inside. So, what's our shit for this one? You know, have you just not been called since you got that thing? No, no, it's not calling. It's, that's the, I think I told you guys, I'm sitting on my wallet. It has like a, to find the wallet. And so, it's oh. reversing it. Wait, what? So, like, there's a tile in here. So, like, if I misplace my wallet then I can ring my wallet from the phone. Oh. But if I sit on it and it clicks that button in the middle, then it rings my phone back. It's like the reverse. Okay. And since I put my wallet in my back pocket sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, so what would be our Basically some shit here? Okay. <laughs> the 2x plus 3. So kind of what you can think about when you're starting this 